Hey, do you have pain on the inside of your knee right here? Well, there's a rare issue that we find here as manual physical therapists that you can correct at home and find on your own at home as well. It's often mistaken for a meniscal injury. It can be related to a meniscus injury, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean here. It's called a tibial shift. And I'm gonna explain how to fix it, how to find it, and, and what this is exactly. But real quick, my name is Dr. David Minoff, and I'm a specialist physical therapist. I'm a manual therapist over at El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. And this channel here is dedicated to helping people stay healthy, active, and mobile while avoiding unnecessary surgery, injections, and medications. Please subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to turn on your notifications so that you can hear about whenever we release new videos as we put out one or two every single week. So let's get to it guys, a tibial shift. I'm gonna bring the skeleton over for just a moment so you can see what I mean. What the tibia is, here's the thigh bone, this is, this is the femur, and this is the tibia, the shin bone. You have a little bone on the outside called the fibula, but we're talking about the femur and the tibia joint, the, the big part of the knee joint. And what happens in this issue, if you have pain on the inside of your knee right here, this tibia, the shin bone, can slide inwards just a bit. You see that, that little shift that I'm making right there? And when it shifts inwards like so, the edge of this bone pops out on the inside of the knee very subtly, and it can get real tender and painful. And if you've got pain on the inside of the knee, it might happen more so when you bend your knee or straighten your knee, but it's definitely pinpointed on the inside of your knee, not the front, not the outside, not the top, not on the back of the knee so much, but on the inside, you might have this tibial shift. Let me tell you how to find it. Now, as a therapist, I know where all the bones are at. I know how to find all this stuff really easy, but I always point it out to my patients that I find it on. If you find your kneecap right here and just inside about where it hurts, if you got this pain, it's really easy to find. You can feel the bony part of your knee joint right here. If you just slide from the top down and you can feel the bumps on there. If you compare that to the other side, and if on your painful side, it's a little bit tender and where it pokes, it pokes out the most, if you just rub it a bit, if you dig in there gently, of course, and press on the area and you find that it's tender, then you might have that tibial shift. So go ahead and do it on yourself. You might use your thumbs or your fingers, whatever you feel you need, but do both at the same time, just like she's doing and slide downwards and inwards to where, where the bones are. You, you only have to span about this distance right here. And once you find a little bump, like right around this area, it could be a little more in the front, a little more in the inside of the knee, that is likely a tibial shift. It's gonna be tender, it's gonna be painful. And um, when we do it here in the clinic, Usually I'll find the spot and I'll just give a little pressure and that the patient's ready to jump and they're, they're telling me, that's where it hurts, you found the spot. So if you've got that, what I do as a therapist is I'm doing techniques to shove this outwards like this and I'll, I'll actually show you real quick. But you may not be around a therapist and can't quite do that to yourself. So I'm gonna show you how to shift your bone back inwards. There's two things you're gonna do. One is a hands-on technique that simulates like what I did. And the other one is a little exercise that you can do to loosen up the joint and get it to settle gradually back in where it's supposed to be. Now, before I show you that, I just wanna explain a little bit about the harm in leading your knee joint like this. It's, it's actually an alignment issue. So going back to the skeleton here, if your knee joint is shifted, sorry, I'm gonna move it all the way back towards you. If your knee joint is shifted like that, how I was showing you, the meniscus, which is a big, huge chunk of cartilage that sits right here, gets compressed awkwardly. The cartilage behind the kneecap on the thigh bone also gets shifted over along with the bottom, uh, with, the, with the tibia, with the shin bone. And so if your knee's operating like that over the long term, you bet you're working on a meniscus tear or some arthritis problem. So you've got to make sure that you take care of this inner knee pain right away and get that alignment back to normal, restore it so that your knee can bend without any issues and that tenderness on the inside of your knee goes away. Here's how you're gonna do the exercise to shift your shin bone back outwards. Let's pretend she's got the issue right here. What you're gonna do is with your right hand, make a C shape with your hand and this part of your hand is gonna go right below where it's tender. So usually it's about right in this area. So go ahead and put your hand about right there. 
Your other hand is going to come on the outside of your thigh and your, your knee, and you're going to have to lean your body as close as you can to your leg and push against each other. So you're shifting your knee over. And as best as you can, keep the body weight through your leg as relaxed as possible. You're just trying to generate a bunch of force through your arms and make it comfortable. You can spread out the force to your hands. You can get your hands a little flatter. Um, and you're gonna do this for about 20, 30 seconds or so. You could do it more than that. It generally doesn't hurt you to do it more, but I found that you get diminishing returns after about 20 to 30 seconds. And um, this, the exercise I'm gonna show you next is what needs to happen along with this to get you the long lasting effect. There you go, and you're pushing as hard as you can. You're really getting in there and <clears throat> trying to get that to shift over. Be careful not to press on the tender spot. You're gonna be right below it. And then if you're, if this is bothering you on the outside, just get your palm a little flatter against your thigh. And same down here, if you're able to get your palm closer to your calf, yeah, like that, that's probably a bit more comfortable for you. Good, so after you've done that for about 20 or 30 seconds, then here's the exercise you're gonna do. I'm gonna stand up so I can show you. You're gonna turn your foot all the way inwards, straighten out your leg just a bit, yep, and then you're gonna scoop towards you and bend your leg as much as it will go under the seat. If your chair blocks it, that's cool to stop where, it, where you, as far as you can go, and then start over again. Scoop your foot inwards and drag your foot towards your seat. And you're gonna do, 20 to 30 reps like that. There you go. So just keep going here as I'm explaining a couple things. Doing this motion forces you to fire certain muscles in your thigh. One of the hamstring muscles and some of the groin muscles that help to get the alignment more stabilized within your knee joints. Now this is a beginner exercise. This is not one that you're gonna be doing long-term. Usually the root of this knee alignment issue is some foot weakness or some hip weakness that's translating down to the down to the knee. Doing this exercise along with that shift on yourself just helps to get the alignment right. Once the knee alignment is restored, you feel like your knee pain's gone away on the inside of the knee, then it's important to get over to some glute exercises, maybe some calf and foot exercises, and make sure that you're moving better when you're walking and when you're exercising. Typically, a knee alignment issue like this, if it's happened recently, if you started to get that pain, say within the past few weeks, you should be over this within a month tops. If you've had that inner knee pain for several months, a year or more, then doing this exercise might be the case for you. You might need to be doing this exercise for many months, maybe even a year or more to get that to diminish down. And you know, if it doesn't continue to get better, if the pain doesn't continue to diminish, it may mean that you need to go see a specialist like a manual therapist like myself to get that knee joint to settle in because there may be more factors um, like a meniscus tear, you might, you may be arthritic in the joint, you may need to move the joint in other ways that you can't quite do on your own to get this joint to settle properly. But I can tell you from experience, I've had this issue myself and uh, it still comes up from time to time, especially if I get a little weaker um, like for instance, right now we just had a baby. It's been three months. I have not been going to the gym as I usually have. I've been trying to get sleep with a newborn. It's important. Plus I have three other kids. So um, it's not a, an easy task for me to get to the gym. And I've caught myself doing this exercise a couple of times and pushing my knee into a correct alignment. But I never have an issue that lasts more than a day. It's usually just a, a quick thing within a day and it's over and I don't feel it again for a long time. But to me, it's telling me that I'm getting weak in certain muscles and I better get on it real soon so I don't run into a bigger problem later on. So um, as far as how often to do this exercise, I would do this exercise every two hours, maybe even every hour. 20 or 30 reps shouldn't take you more than a few minutes. And it shouldn't be super tiring. If anything, you'll feel like the inner thigh work, the, the hamstring, the inner hamstring might get a little bit tired, but it shouldn't be anything that tires you out so much that you're sweating or getting a huge workout. And stuff. So guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you've got that inner knee pain and you try this out on your own and you had a success, or if you're having trouble with it, drop a comment, let us know so we can get back to you as fast as possible. I want to know if you, if you were successful too, so that you can keep your meniscus healthy and your cartilage healthy. Give us a like as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we put out our brand new videos every week. Have a wonderful day guys. Bye-bye.